YouTube, I've heard your questions. More like I've read your questions. How do I manage a BR game? When do I go to the bullpen? How do I go about pinch hitting? Questions of that nature. We're gonna answer them in this video. Today, we are going to play an entire Battle Royale game. I am not going to make any edits to the gameplay. I'm gonna walk you through every single decision I'm making, why I'm doing it, how I'm thinking that way, and what the other alternative options are. A couple months ago, I put together a How To Go Flawless video, linked down below, uh, and it got a lot of great positive feedback. It's actually one of my most successful videos of all time, so thank you. So the, the logical progression from that now, well, how do I execute it? How do I put it into action? By teaching you how to draft, that's step one. This right here, step two. The key, of course, is making decisions that are good decisions, 12 games in a row to go flawless. It's very difficult. Sure, but you can get better at BR. You're better at it already than you think. It really all comes down to decision making. So today, gonna help you get better. If these tips end up helping you, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Also like the video, comment down below what are some of your BR tips and tricks and how it's helped you be successful. Everybody handles this mode a little bit differently, but I do think there are some common practices that we should all be aware of, and that's what we're gonna go talk about. YouTube. So as you can see, we already have a team here. I'm not going to do a draft again. I'm not going to teach you guys how to draft again. That is in the previous video. But just taking a quick glance at this team, I will show you who we have. And I'm going to give you how I'd like to handle the game before the game starts. We have live series Taylor Ward. Boom. We have Kaiju Corey Seager. He's disgusting. Supercharged Francisco Alvarez. Always take the supercharges. We have this 88 Miguel Sano. We have Mexico series Michael Conforto. Eduardo Escobar, who is just a glitch and a goon. Garrett Stubbs, who is great at right field. He's not fantastic, but that's fine. Jonathan India at second base. And this lineup is so deep, we have Anthony Rizzo hitting last. I mean, come on, this is a great team. Of course, with a lineup that good, the bullpen's kind of poopy. So we're going to have quick hooks on pitchers, and that's okay. It's one of our strategies. But we have Colin McHugh, Jesse Chavez, Adam Adovino, Jorge Alcala, Brock Burke, Will Smith, Matt Bush, Lou Trevino. And then on a rotation, we have a few guys we can get some outs with. Carlos Rodon, Cole Irvin, Mason Miller, Patrick Corbin, and Luis Heal in an emergency. So boys and girls, what I'm trying to do with this team here, what I'm trying to do specifically with my lineup and bench is have them cover for weak spots. We do have some people who are slow. We're going to use pinch runners. This fella, Jackson Flores, has 62 speed. TJ Friedel has 69. Nice. Taylor Trammell, 50. That's not great. Bobby Dahlbeck, shockingly 70, and he's got pop. So we're going to use our bench to fulfill specific needs. We might not need it every game, but we're going to be aware of the fact that they're there. And then when it comes to the rotation, my goal this year in MLB The Show 23, is to start starters. Sometimes that wasn't the case in the past, but we're doing it now. My goal is to get three to four outs with every single starter I use. This, of course, has a lot to do with the stamina bar, how well my opponent's hitting, but if I can bank on three to four outs per start with my rotation, that makes my bullpen so much deeper. All right, so we're going to go hop into a game right now, and I will be back with you momentarily when the game begins. All right, I lied. I'm going to talk to you now. We're choosing Carlos Rodon to start game one. Why is that? He's my highest rated starting pitcher. I told you I'd walk you through every single decision we're making, and that's one of them. So there you go. We've made our decision. Now we just await our opponent to hit the button. He has. We're locking in the lineup. Boom. So we are facing Frankie Montas. He's got an okay, decent lineup. He does have a supercharge in there, as we do as well. We're going to make this work. We are hitting first. It is obviously ideal to be the home team in BR. We're hitting first. Take pitches in BR, everybody. I'm not saying never swing. I'm not saying wait until there's two strikes. There are some people out there who might tell you that. That's not my philosophy. I sit one pitch, one spot, until two strikes. And then I protect. But if I don't get the pitch I want, I'm not swinging until I have to. Basically making the pitcher work. Because stamina is so important here. First thing you do, however, when a game begins is you warm up the bullpen. I always warm up one lefty and one righty. Who you choose is up to you. In these earlier games, I try to use my lower leverage relievers just because if matchmaking works appropriately, you're probably not facing incredible players early on. Subject, subject excuse me, to change. So it's righty-righty, know the pitcher you're facing. Frankie Montas is going to throw a lot of sinkers inside, just as he did there. So I am sitting on a sinker in, but it's got to be middle. If it's low, I'm leaving it until there's two strikes. It's 2-0. Oh. Look at us. If, if it's 2-0, oh, 
we can trust that a sinker inside is going to come, or at least a fastball inside is going to come. There it was. It's a perfect perfect, and I cannot believe that just happened. It was actually low. It was outside of the zone of what I was looking for, but it was that sinker inside. We got it. We pulled it. We're up one nothing. Eddie threw three pitches. So now I'm looking sinker away. I think he's still going to throw sinkers in this general area. Fastball high, we let it go. Or cutter high, we let it go. Let's see if we can get it again. 2-0, cutter inside. He's got to go to it eventually. He went to it on 2-0 last time. 3-0, we're just going to spit at pitches. Spit at pitches. Traffic on the bases in BR is key. Because weird stuff's going to happen in this mode. 3-0, by the way, I don't swing. I just don't. If I have a lead, maybe, but in a close game early, I'm letting it go. And that's a walk. We didn't get the pitch we wanted. I'm not swinging unless I get the pitch I want. In Battle Royale, it's not worth it. Francisco Alvarez is supercharged. We're looking sinker inside again. That was the one, but it's okay. We're doing all right. 0-2. Oh now we fight. Now we fight. Make him throw pitches. That's another perfect. That was an absolute bomb. I don't think that's making it over the fence, though. Why'd he dive? Oh, and he's out of here. Okay, look. We executed our game plan to perfection. We didn't get to pitch. That's not a big deal. But I'll, uh, I'll see it in game two, I guess. All right, Carlos Rodon didn't throw a single pitch. So he's going to pitch this game again. Here we go. Let's keep the same strategy. Be selective at the plate. Kill the pitches that we want to hit. We're facing Patrick Sandoval. Interesting. I don't know why you'd ever draft him in Battle Royale. But... We're going to look for soft stuff away against uh, right-handed hitters. And the lefties, we're going to look fastballs in, sliders out. That's the strategy with Patrick Sandoval, really. Again, we are up first. So, with Taylor Ward, I'm looking low and away with, against a lefty. I might not swing at the first one to see what my opponent does, but this is where I'm sitting. That's actually the exact pitch I want to swing at. So, good to know that he's going to throw it. I want that pitch if he's going to put it there. And we got it. And we absolutely destroyed it. Sit on your spot. Wait for it. If you get it, don't miss it. It is that simple. If you get the pitch you're sitting on, don't miss it. You'll win every BR game. So now, with a lefty up, we're sitting fastball inside, slider away. There's the slider away. We called it, but it's fine. I'd rather swing at the fastball. It's okay to let strikes go by. You're on all-star difficulty. I know that's not easy for everybody, but the pitch speeds are not crazy. You, you'll you be able to fight and, and foul stuff off. Two and one. I would guess a fastball is coming now. So we'll see. It was. I actually missed that one. That was higher than I thought he would throw it. Two and two. No big deal. We're still alive here. It's two and uh, three and two. Excuse me. Full count. We're having great at bats here so far. Ah, uh, all right. See, that was a good pitch. It was a... I probably could have hit it if I pulled the trigger a little earlier, but he spotted a good pitch. We'll give him the out there. No big deal. But look at him. He's at eight pitches. He's got one out. Starting pitchers go 20 pitches in BR, and they're gassed. So we're already almost halfway there. I'm curious if he throws circle change or regular change, whatever he throws, low and away again, because we hammered it last time. Fastball in. Okay. Not what I wanted. Not what I wanted at all. If he throws me anything on the outer third of the plate, low, high, I'm going for it. Nope. Not what I wanted. Hittable pitch, but not what I wanted. Now it's 0-2. Now we fight. Ball. You got to be good at recognizing pitches in BR. So you do have to put some work in ahead of time. Don't swing outside the zone. 2-2. Two and two. That was actually a very competitive pitch. I kind of wanted to swing at it, but I let it go. Oh, and I already defied my own rule. 3-2. I forgot to warm the bullpen up. Always always warm your bullpen up. Brock Burke, Jesse Chavez. Okay. Still happened in the first inning, so it'll be warm by the, the bottom half, so that's fine. We didn't really mess anything up there. And that is mashed. So, we're up two. He's thrown... How many pitches now? 14 pitches? Something like that? And he's got one out. We're burning through Patrick Sandoval. I'm going to sit outer third again. And that's a base hit. 
I swung at the first pitch there because he threw it where I wanted it. I didn't really hit it particularly well, but I hit it well enough. And in BR, that's all that's going to matter because the ball flies in this mode. So now he's going to go to the bullpen full well, realizing Patrick Sandoval is almost gassed. Do we sit slider away this time? Let's do it. Ah, it was a changeup. Good pitch. All right, I kind of screwed myself there. I sat on something different. It looked like a slider out of the hand, and then it didn't break. So, good pitch. He got an out. No big deal. We're still up two. Eduardo Escobar is a glitch, so you know where I'm sitting against a lefty outside. That is a ball. It's the first time he's thrown me that. We are still sitting outer third. If he goes inside, we'll get there with two strikes. But early in the count, I'm sitting outside. It's fine. What this does, chat, is if Patrick Sandoval or my opponent are still here in the second inning, he should go to the bullpen. He's going to have no energy left. It's simply, it's simply not smart to continue pitching him after this. We got it, and it's a... That's going to happen a lot in BR. We got the pitch we wanted. It was a perfect perfect, and it was an out. But it's okay. Now I get to show you how to pitch. Or at the, at the very least, get outs. The pitching here is not as important as the out getting. We're not trying to like do how to pitch with videos like we do every Thursday on this channel. Right now, we're just trying to get some outs. Oh, I forgot I'm on pinpoint. Um, we're just trying to get some outs, and then I'll show you when it's time to go to the bullpen. In an ideal world, you're reading swings. In BR, you need to be very hyper aware of how your opponent is swinging and seeing the pitchers that you're using. He probably sees Carlos Rodon pretty well. That was a perfect, perfect double. Or he was only sitting on the fastball like I've been sitting on pitches and he hit it. So we'll see. But that first swing tells me a lot. He, he's at least a decent hitter. And he's got good batting averages. 529 here with Harry Ford. So we just got to pitch around and be careful. With someone who's got high batting averages, I'm probably quicker to go to the bullpen. Give him a different look. It never hurts to give different looks. You have a ton of relievers, you might as well use them. That's a great pitch. Oh, I love that. I love that. So remember, I said we're trying to get three to four outs with every pitcher that we use, or at least with the starter. There are some situational pitchers where three to four outs just is not necessary, or if it's a blowout, you can keep your pitcher out there. Um, but with my starter, I like to get at least through one inning. If it's possible to get through two, I'd love to get through two. But let's not be overzealous, because once you start extending, that's when problems happen. Generally speaking, the second you see your starting pitcher or any pitcher's energy hit yellow, yank him the heck out of there, because bad things might happen, especially in a mode where you have bronzes and silvers pitching to diamonds. So I've also learned that he really doesn't swing at that slider low and in. All right. I should, he's sitting on the fastball outside, or he just doesn't miss the fastball outside, because that's twice he's hit that. So good for him. We've learned. It's fine. It's BR. There's bound to be runs scored. Uh, I'm going to try to get one more out here with Rodon, just because it's lefty-lefty. Just because it's lefty-lefty. As, as you can see, excuse me, 13 pitches were in the yellow. But I like this lefty-lefty matchup. I don't want to burn a reliever if I don't have to. But this will probably for sure be his last batter. And yeah. All right, my opponent's good. That's weird in the second game of a run, but that's fine. Rodon's day, finished. I have seen enough. My opponent has three very well-hit baseballs. He got two outs, and we're facing someone who hits lefties pretty well. So it's time to go to Jesse Chavez. And the second you use a reliever, warm up another one to take his place. If you put in a lefty, warm up a lefty. You put in a righty, warm up a righty. Simple as that. So let's try it to get out of this with no more damage done. Oh, that would have been my ground out I wanted. No, that's a foul ball. Thank you. I know it's a foul ball, Mr. Umpire. All right. Getting Goriel out here would be cash money because we could just go hit again. Good take. But I think maybe we tunneled that appropriately for this to be a called strike three. Yeah. Okay. So two to two. I probably made a stupid pitching choice there, throwing uh, Sonoa fastball outside and seeing how well he hit it last time. But we learned from it. We don't do it again. Yeah. Patrick Sandoval should get out of this game. I'd be shocked if he's staying in, maybe. I do have a lefty up, but we're hitting him really well. He's got 20 A's out of here. So another lefty, Alex Vezia. What does he throw? He throws a four-seamer slider in a circle. So it's the same strategy. Four-seamers in, sliders away. That's what we're sitting on anyway. That might not be what's thrown, but early in the count, that's what we're sitting on. 
I could have swung at that, but I want to see how he attacks me with, with Vesia. Oh, I just missed that slider. I just missed it. All right. That was not a bad pitch to swing at. I just did not execute, but that's fine. Jonathan India meshes lefties. I want the four seamer outside. Or change up. Because he's got great opposite field power. This gold Jonathan India is actually an excellent little BR card. Mashed it. Right on the screws. Right at the right fielder. Twice. We've missed our... Well, I didn't really miss that one. It just didn't really do what I wanted it to. No big deal. We hit with Rizzo. Who actually hits lefties very well. I'd like to take a few pitches now. Those last two at-bats were pretty quick. 2-0. I'll take a strike here just to make sure we get his pitch count up a little bit. There we go, two and one. Because pitchers also lose accuracy the more tired they get. And if they're going to lose accuracy and start floating pitches over the middle in BR, that is bad news. It's fine, I didn't want to hit that one. But now it's three and two, we're fighting here. That's a walk. Great at bat. Great at bat. And now we turn it over to Taylor Ward, who homered last time. He's actually weaker against lefty pitchers, but I don't think that's a big deal here. Because he homered last time, clearly. Ball one. We're going to be patient, and we're going to continue, for me, to sit fastball outside. Now, for you, you might sit on different pitchers in and out. You might want a fastball in. You might want to change up in. Where you're sitting and what pitches you're sitting on are entirely your preference. I know the pitches I hit well, so that's why I'm sitting on them. This is not me telling you you must sit four-seamer up and away. Know that. This is just me telling you how well I hit them. And that's another walk. Look, we be patient, we get walks here. Corey Seager's up, and he could do damage against a lefty. So we have to do damage here, especially with two outs. Oh, little too happy and excited for that one because that was hittable. One and one. I would I would imagine he pitches carefully to Seager, even though the three batter is up next. Seager is dangerous. I would pitch careful. Two and one. This is the type of situation where if we get our pitch, we have to hammer it. And we did, I think. Yeah, we did. We waited, and he's out of here. It works. Wait for your pitch. It works. All right, we're going to try to do one more game here to see if we can really get deep into a game. It is not my problem that people quit very quickly, but we're going to try to get deeper into a game to show you guys just a little more strategy. Let us pitch. Let us get outs. I already forgot to warm up the bullpen because I got so excited to pitch, but hey, we got one out already, and that's great. Now, you'll notice here that I have Michael Conforto in center field. It's not ideal. Why is he out there? Because I got a really bad draft of defensive center fielders. So, late in the game, if it's close, I might go to my bench. Not to take out Conforto, but maybe we take out a corner outfielder and move some stuff around. Just to get a better defensive player out there. Um, but sometimes you gotta do what you gots to do. Outfield defense can burn you in this mode, but it also might not be an enormous deal, depending on what the score is. So now we're down one nothing. He has swung at two straight pitches, hit both of them pretty well. We're going to have a bloodbath on our hands, so we're going to have to pitch carefully. With Mason Miller, who I'm pitching here, he's like a low-tier starting option. I'd prefer not to use him, so that means we're going to have a quicker leash. See how many more hits we let up. That was just a bad pitch. We'll see how many good swings my opponent takes against him. I would say Mason Miller might have, like, one more hit allowed. If he lets up another one, we're yanking him. He's getting torched already. And that's not good. We got to keep games close early on. But my opponent swings at everything. And we got a nice little Taylor made double play. He got three outs in seven or eight pitches. He let up a run. This might be the type of situation where if I hit well, I let him go for a full second inning. But everything is at bat by at bat in Battle Royale. You have to react in real time. Having a mapped out plan is great in theory. But you have to be able to adapt as the game is going on. That's really the moral of the story in BR. So again, we're sitting with pitches away. Because Taylor Ward, one of my favorite live series cards in this game, demolishes those pitches. And I will sit here and stare at everything. 
literally till the cows come home until I get my pitch. Three and one. I'll take a leadoff walk. I mean, I don't necessarily want to have the hard take sign here, but I'm, I'm not really... Yeah, why swig at that? There's no reason. We'll take the leadoff walk. Base runners, they're free. They're great. They're amazing. Corey Seager, you know the damage he does. We're sitting on a fastball in. If we get it, it's going over the fence. That's a slider in. Good pitch. We'll give him the strike. I don't want to swing at that. That's a double play. Two and one. I think we're going to attack. Okay. It wasn't my fastball, but it was a very hittable 12-6, and I will certainly take the single. Sometimes you adjust. That's what I said. You got you to gotta adjust in BR. We adjusted there. Got a hit. Now it's time to do damage. That is French for damage. Bases are loaded. If he's going to keep floating 12 sixes in here, I'll swing at him. They're not even competitive. It's an adjustment off the game plan, but it worked. one nothing. We can end this game right now with Miguel Sano. It might be over already. Nope, he's here. All right, Ryan Presley, new pitcher. Fastball's inside, righty, righty. I'm sitting on it. I'm going to kill it if I get it. He throws a lot of breaking stuff. I'm going to try not to swing at breaking stuff. Roll over ground ball central. I don't want to hit into a double play here. Could have swung at that first pitch, but it's a first pitch of a reliever. We'll take it. That probably could have been called a strike, but I'll take it one and one. Two and one. We're not hitting into a double play here. If we do, I'm going to be sad. We can really grab momentum here. And we did. We grabbed all of it, and we put it over the fence. Why? I wanted a fastball up and in. I got a fastball up and in. I didn't miss it. It went over the fence. We're up four to one. Fastball's low and away to lefties. That's my, that's my sweet spot. That's my sweet spot. I will sit here and take it until I get it, or there's two strikes. Two and one. It could be annoying to sit here and wait. I get it. Ah, I should have swung at that. But if you want to win games, it's 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 worth trying. Three and two. Now I'm ready for anything. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to hit any pitch, any location. And we're going to take a walk because he does not throw strikes. So I'll take that. Thank you. My opponent might be out of here. Nope, he's still here. Nope, he's gone again. Doesn't know what to do. There we go. He's back again. That was a weird pitch I should not have swung at, but I got excited. It's fine. No big deal. We're going back to our normal strategy. Fastballs low and away. Three and one. Sir, you're going to have to put it in the zone. Another walk. I'm going to sit here and walk. I'll take all the walks. Keep pausing. I don't know. Listen, the base runners are your fault. All right, to a lefty now. It's a, he throws sinkers, so we're going to look for sinkers in. We're going to sit on the first one. Oh, and one. New pitcher. We want to see what he does. Sinker in. We're hammering it. We did hammer it. Just very foul. All over it, though. Now it's 0-2. Now we're in com complete fight mode. Complete fight mode on 1-2. and 2-2. Two. Two and two. Be patient. Read slider out of the hand. You know what pitches he throws. Be aware of them. Recognize them. Full count. We got the pitch. We didn't hit it particularly well, but I will surely take the RBI single there. It was kind of a defensive swing, but we also knew that sinkers inside to a lefty were coming eventually, so we weren't surprised by it. Not a big deal. Still nobody out. Sinker low and away. I want it. I want the sinker low and away desperately. I want to punch that right center field gap. Ooh, wasn't a sinker, but it was an outside fastball. Oh, and two, we're fighting. Oh, that was a really bad inside out swing, but the PCI was all over it, and we fought. Probably a little fluke there. I kind of feel for my opponent because that was not a great hit. But we did square it up. You can't argue the fact that I, my PCI was not all over that ball. And we fought and made him throw some pitches. Anthony Rizzo, lefty. Lefty's going to get a sinker. Or, I mean, a hanging slider. I'm swinging at a hanging slider. That's I deviated from my plan, but it was, it was a hanger. 
Oh, and one. Plus, we're up 6 1. We could take some risks. If we get the sinker inside, we're going to kill it. We're going to absolutely destroy it. He might be auto pitching here. I don't know if that was an auto pitch, but it was a four seamer. Sinker crushed it. It's not being caught. Nope. And we're going to hold here because we have 25 speed. We're going to absolutely stay put. Now, notice, guys, it's 8 to 1. There's nobody out. If it remains this way, or... Is he quitting? Whatever happens. If we're pitching again in this game, we're not taking Mason Miller out. We're going to ride him a little bit and get some outs. And the other thing we're going to do, we are going to change up our bullpen. We're going to use our lesser pitchers now. Lou Trevino... Jorge Alcala, who are your, uh, Luis Heel probably is the better option. Um, who your lesser pitchers are are up to you. It depends on who you do well with and who you don't mind using in a blowout. Right now, I'm going to warm up Luis Heel. Trevor got sinkers in probably. That's a good pitch. Cutters away is another pitch he's going to throw to a righty. Is that staying fair? Because that was a decent swing. Nope, foul ball. Just wait for pitches that are definitely strikes. Don't swing at crap. Oh, and two, though, we're fighting. We absolutely destroyed that hanging, whatever it was. It wasn't really a hanger. It floated a little. Second and third. The offense is humming along here, by the way. Absolutely humming along. With Corey Seager, I, I want a sinker low and away. I want to hit this ball. Because he does throw a sinker, right? I'm not, he does. I'm not making that up. Trevor Gott's a very good BR reliever. One and one. If we get something low and in this quadrant, it's gone. Ah, that was a little inside and a curveball. I'm going to push it. Why not? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Go back. Deviated from the plan there, but it was it was a curveball. It made me want to swing at it. Again, not a huge deal. We're clearly up eight to one. Francisco! Yeah. Sir, stop throwing pitches low. I'm all over them. We're up 11 to one. It's Battle Royale. And we're up 11 to 1. So we're going to coast in this one, hopefully. At this point, up 11 to 1, just keep swinging away. If you're getting your pitch, keep hammering it. Don't change the plan. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. If you get lackadaisical, that will then carry into next game. Or the game after. And you'll get out of rhythm. It's going to seem like you're pouring it on. It's because you are. But that's fine. Keep your strategy going. Don't lose sight of the mission. Ah, good pitch. 2-0. I thought he was going to bang one low in the zone. He did not. Not a big deal. Conforto looking for some... Is he burning through his entire bullpen? By oh, now he quit. That was what he quit on. Okay. Well, we're 3-0. YouTube, this recording didn't go according to plan. We didn't get through a single full game. However, I think we spoke enough and showed you enough, at least at the plate, of how to go about managing and playing a BR game. We can maybe do another one of these in the future that is more pitching focused because clearly we didn't get to do much of it here. But you did see how I approach hitting. Be patient. Pick your spot. Hit your pitch. If you get it, don't miss it. Score runs, most importantly. And just manage your bullpen. Always have somebody warming up, preferably a righty and a lefty. Situationally, sit your good relievers down if it's a blowout and put in your crappy pitchers. Be smart. Bullpen management, pitching management is a key in Battle Royale. Know how many outs you're capable of getting. Know when to push it. Know when to pull back. Things you'll learn from experience, but I hope this video helped you nonetheless. Thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. I appreciate all the love and support on YouTube lately. If you haven't liked it or subscribed, make sure you do so. Comment down below your BR strategies, what you thought of this video. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time.